But um, did you ever know of any females that were pregnant and actually wrestled in, in matches? No, I never did run across that, thank God. I think that would have upset me. <laughs> that would have been something. <laughs> I think that would have upset me a little bit. <clears throat> well, you know, if you look back at some of the, the men wrestlers, there were some ep epic type men such as uh, Gorgeous George. Oh, yeah. He, he broke the barrier. And then there was Jimmy Superfly Snuka. Oh, yeah. And that broke the barrier. Superfly. And then even before him uh, was Freddie Blassie. Classy, now, Freddie now, Blassie. Now, what Freddie Blassie did was added the verbiage. To wrestling. Pencil neck geek. Pencil neck geek. Pencil and, and, neck geek. And, 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 and he started things which other people have have capitalized on in current and oh, Vince yeah. McMahon especially has made millions of dollars out of what Freddie Blassie pioneered. So what I was going to ask you is uh, is and by the way Hulk Hogan is another. Oh, he he was okay. fabulous. Oh, you know if it wasn't for Hulk, not to interrupt, you want know, to finish your yeah. thought, then I'll tell oh, you yeah. something about right. Hulk. Um, I feel that Hulk Hogan, the combination of Hulk Hogan and Vince McMahon Jr. was what made wrestling what it is today. Because when I entered wrestling back in the 80s, you know, trying to get some recognition anyway, uh, there was no television, there was no nothing in California. There was nothing. Wrestling was dead. Basically, it was just live events in the South and the, and the East Coast. But Hulk Hogan and Vince McMahon got together, and through his charisma, Hulk Hogan's charisma, Vince McMahon's promotion, the smartest thing Vince McMahon did was give the team the show away free. That's how it turned into what it is. Because he said, show my show, you know, air my show, and you can put whatever, I'll give it to you free, you do the, uh, let me advertise my products, you do your own advertising for what you want. And it became such a phenomenal you know, financial success. He filled the auditorium. He's the people started and, coming. And he got back. the ticket sales. Yeah, this was from the marketing of the you know, toys and the you know, but basically getting the personalities back on TV, and you know, and so showing that there was an audience for it. The TV people thought, oh, there's no audience for that. That's dead. You know, because Hollywood had all its you know, spectacular fights and bombs and this and that. Oh, wrestling's not good anymore. They found out it was. <laughs> well, you know, one of the ingredients that I, I can remember when I first saw a wrestling match, I was about nine years old, and my father took me to the Sportatorium in Dallas, and we were sitting close to the, the ring, and it was Al Loveless versus Pear Shaped Pal. <laughs> and so this, to me, they were wrestling, and they were hurting each other and things like that, but what got me was when... Pear-shaped Powell started beating on Al Loveless, and the referee was looking some other place, <laughs> and they were being unfair. Oh yeah, the classic. And that referee. just, I, 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 it, it changed me. From then on, I watched every wrestling match on. To see uh, what was on, fair, wasn't. What's fair and what wasn't fair. And Mark, you know, this is something that comes in if you look at, at even America's Got Talent now or American Idol. You see. It's the the Simon Cowell. It's the uh, he's the villain. Uh, the villain. It, it, mm -hmm. It's it's uh, it, uh, Pierce Morgan. It's the people that are negative that that come in and criticize when people are thinking, wait a minute, this was this person was really good. It, there's something about that, and there was something about the fact that professional wrestling let people get away with murder, get, with, <laughs> get away <laughs> with doing bad things. When you could see it in front of you, and, mm -hmm. and people, you would actually see people standing up oh, in, the, yeah. in, in, the, in the audience, and they would be yelling at the audience, at the referee. And if mm -hmm. you could ever get somebody yelling at the referee, you know you got them. You got a good, oh, yeah, you got a good hook if they're yelling at you. And as a villain, I was always the villain. And so I had to have people walk with me to my car because they would have to beat me up. I had men who would be outside going, you are going to kick your, you know what, you did that to little Sally, the former's daughter, and your mama. Oh, boy. <laughs> you know, they, because I'm always beating up the little girls. I'm a big girl. They always have me beating up little girls. And I look so vicious and horrible. Well, I kind of am. Don't mess with me. Don't get me mad. But um, Well, this fits, in, <laughs> this fits into human nature because if you look at what happened, the evolution of wrestlers, you see people who were mediocre draw at the box office until they cut their hair and became the bad guys. Oh, yeah. Steve Austin mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. so stone cold. Stone cold. He was gorgeous. He had blonde hair. Mm -hmm. He was a mediocre guy, yeah. but he shaved his head. He got mean. He started drinking beer in the room <laughs> in the ring, and he started being dirty. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he nasty. became champion. He was nasty and mean guy. Yes, he was. So there's something about human nature there. There's a, you oh. can, there's a lesson to be learned out of watching the audience. Oh yes. At a wrestling. Well, I feel that the spectator sports we call it theatrical sports now. But the, the idea that we're acting out life's drama, it's like a soap opera. And then you, you, it is a soap opera. So we're, we always have the bad guy versus the good guy. I miss those days because now the lines are blurred. You know, bad is good, good is bad. I mean, I liked it back in the days when it was clearly good, clearly bad. You know, it was, it was, it was fun for me, but it's still, it's still good. But anyway, it's a soap opera, and you tune in or you go to the next match because you leave them on the hook. You leave them, what's going to happen? You know, how is Matilda going to get punished? How is Queen Gong going to get punished for her bad actions? She beat up the referee, threw him out of the ring, and, and then all the good girls came out of the dressing room and pounded her. Then she had to have all the bad girls come out and pound them, and there was a battle royal. Who's going to win that? You know, it was, kind of, it was exciting. To Did you win any uh, trophies, any uh, belts, I guess? I had a glow crown. I was the first crown. We had a crown instead of a belt. And I do have a heavyweight champion belt. Unfortunately, it burned up in a house fire. Bummer. But anyway, uh, I did have, yeah, I went, and I do have a heavyweight champion uh, uh, tr trophy. I won in Japan. We were the tag team uh, trophy winners in Japan, me and Beastie the Road Warrior. <laughs> it's great. Did you ever have a situation where your tag team partner let you get in trouble just because he was mad at you? She was mad at you? No, I, tag team partners are pretty tight. You're pretty tight but with your tag team partners. But you've seen that in men. I, mean, I it have seen it. Well, I've seen, you've seen it in the storylines. But in reality, you got to have one person you trust. You're not going to tag up with somebody you don't trust. But, you know, you could have, you said, so, you know, let's say wrestling is not phony, but we do, because it's 80% real contact. And, you, you know. Can, the, the, the getting hurt part. Is not fun. real. There's real pain and real injuries. I'm in a wheelchair because I have, you know, nerve damage to my neck and to my lower back. And I've seen people break their ankles and their feet, get their eyes gouged for real, and things go horribly wrong. I've even seen death in the ring. I mean, it's very serious. Tell us about that. And uh, who got killed? Well, I was in England uh, uh, making a wrestling movie of all things, and uh, I went to the matches. And Big Daddy was there. And he's 600 pounds. 600 pound man, and he's well, huge and strong. And so that's his name, Big Daddy? Big Daddy. And he had, I forget the name of his opponent, but he was, you know, he was a decent sized guy, but he mared, hair mared him down, and he, but he flew off the top rope, and he belly slammed him, and he broke his rib, and went into his heart. Oh, and he gosh. died. Died after the match. So it can't happen. And as you, I told you before, Jimmy Snuka. He used to break guys' ribs all the time, and it's amazing that nobody died from what he, his big fly, you know. And, how, uh, how, how tall was, were, were the ring ropes, the top rope that he jumped off of? Was that five foot? Let's see, the top of the ropes was about here on me, so I don't oh, okay. know, not six foot four, so, so I don't know. So four and a half feet or something like that. Yeah, so. But still, when you jump, he would fly up into the air. If you get up on the top, yeah. That's a height, that's quite a height. Did he get hurt? Oh, yes, they, all those people got hurt. Uh, every single wrestler's had horrible injuries. You know, but a lot of times, but the adrenaline and the, the pumped up for the audience, you know, the show must go on. I, bro I wrestled on a broken ankle. I didn't even know it was broken. I go, oh, I've got a little pain down there, you know, because I'm so pumped up and I want to disappoint my audience, you know, and I want, you know, I want the show to go, be excited and, you know, people still be happy. And, yeah, I had my wrestling boots on, so I kept it tight enough I couldn't tell. You know, until afterwards, and then, oh, boy, I was in trouble. But it happens. People really get hurt. Tell us about uh, people, uh, I can remember seeing wrestlers, even women wrestlers, who actually would cut their head to where they had scar scabs or scars. Yeah. So that when they got in the ring, all the opponents oh, yeah, had to the do little... was rub their finger across that, and then they start bleeding. Well, that's a that's an insider's trick, you know, that, that they, they, actually, <laughs> uh, they actually nick themselves with a little razor blade. And they could, either, they could do it during the match, they have the little razor blades stuffed in their little belt, or, or they might do it before the match. It depends on how they plan the whole big thing to unfold. They've got a little tiny nick, and then if you 
get a slap on the head, it'll just gush because you've got the blood will gush because you have all those capillaries in your head. Mm -hmm. And you see some of the old time wrestlers with all these horrible scars and scars right. on their face. Oh, I think it's too barbaric. 